a basic understanding of Ferdinand de Saussure and semiotics. I'm D. Elizabeth Glasgow, and I'm your lecturer for this series. Ferdinand de Saussure thought of language as a unique type of social practice. Language, Saussure believed, is a combination of signs that a community shares, a social product acquired by heritage and passed through the generations. In this, correlations to the past are stronger than language innovation. Nevertheless, these ties to past language practices do not impede new displacements. That is why Saussure's study of language has two perspectives, one that is synchronic and the other one diachronic. In Course in General Linguistics, a 1916 book of Saussure's lectures and course notes, posthumously compiled by his students, the linguist made a distinction between what he calls synchronic and diachronic forms of analysis. He wrote, in practice, a language state is not a point, but rather a certain span of time, during which the sum of the modifications that have supervened is minimal. The span may cover ten years, a generation, a century, or even more. It is possible for a language to change hardly at all over a long span, and then to undergo radical transformations within a few years. Of two languages that exist side by side during a given period, one may evolve drastically, and the other practically not at all. Study would have to be diachronic in the former instance, synchronic in the latter. Simply put, Saussure asserted that the synchronic perspective observes language from a static point of view. It makes a temporary cut and determines what are the patterns that structure language at that given moment that is accepted by a speech community. On the other hand, the diachronic perspective examines the evolution of language through history. It is focused on how word signs are modified, how new ones appear and other ones become old-fashioned. Saussure so was a structuralist linguist. What does this mean? Well, the structuralist school of linguistics looks for underlying elements in culture and language that can be connected so as to draw general conclusions about how language systems emerge and how communities and individuals operate within a given system. Indeed, structuralist linguists argue that everything individuals do that can be considered human is expressed in language and that language symbols extend well beyond written and oral communication these symbols represent all aspects of human activity for example music performance requires complex notation economic life rests upon the exchange of labor and goods for symbols like cash checks stocks bonds and certificates social life depends upon meaningful gestures and signals like body language social life also revolves around the exchange of small symbolic favors like parties dinners or ceremonies as well as the rituals contained within them in all the structuralists asserted that since language comes in patterns there are certain underlying elements that are common to all human experience they believe that one can observe these experiences through patterns. So again, Saussure was a structuralist, and structuralism is a theoretical framework that is oblivious to history in its search for what language means, and it represents the here and now. That is to say, it is synchronic because it looks at structures ahistorically. It neglects the conditions from which these language conventions emerge for the purpose of explaining how language operates in the present. For Saussure, this theoretical framework evolved into a method of study called semiology, the process of analyzing language as a whole system that structures its part into distinct units of meaning called signs. In an ever-changing system, new signs emerge and old ones become obsolete. Semiotics, as semiology came to be known as, looks at moments frozen in time to determine how the system works unlike a law or a custom where one can be able to ascertain its origin saussure looked at language as something individuals obtain in a decentralized and informal manner in everyday practice importantly saussure envisioned that language is not given to us in a localized way nor is its development conceptualized or designed in a formal way 
Rather, Saussure believed that language emerges from natural selection, that language operates as a set of mutually referential signs. He was interested in getting away from what he regarded as an older conception of language, where words refer to things arbitrarily. What Saussure envisioned was that individuals gain meaning or sense from language from within a mutually referential system of other kinds of words. In part two, we will look at Ferdinand Saussure and semiotics as a social practice, as meaning making. I'm D. Elizabeth Glasgow. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.